is here at Esselwan Books in Los Angeles, California that we speak with celebrity chefs Pat and Gina Neely. They have a new book entitled Back Home with the Neelys. I'm Michael Real, and this is RealUrbanNews.com. We've been in so many cars, in the backseat of so many cars for the last three or four weeks mm -hmm. that, you know, coming from the South where you used to driving your own car, I'm ready to drive my own. I don't want to you look at the back of nobody's head. So you all drive at home? Yeah, no, yeah. Actually, look, uh -huh. here's the thing. People always think that when you are a public figure sure. that you have all these amenities and people bowing down to you but we do our own grocery shopping we oh. do everything ourselves so but that's what keeps you humble and keep you grounded talk about the process the decision process of gathering this these 100 recipes for your new book back home you know i think the process was pat and i originally started with our first book was really about introducing us who we were what the family stood for, what we felt about family, what family means, how family is so important. The second cookbook sort of matriculated on into celebration, mm -hmm. like um, different holidays. We even created holidays like Sweet Tea and Sympathy sure. because some people are dying now. And, and how people often, um, everybody flocks to you, the other funeral and everything, but mm -hmm. when that week passes by, you still feeling that grief, no one is there for you. Sure. And kind of just saying maybe hold back and save a little something for that and just kind of let them know you're still thinking about them. Mm -hmm. So we tried to create new traditions for people to kind of create for themselves. So this third cookbook was more about, and we kind of uh, collaborated about it and talked about it and said, what can we do differently? So we started thinking about, you know, where we came from, mm -hmm. what's in our heart, sure. what, what resonated with us. Mm -hmm. So I think just writing the third cookbook was more about a tribute to how we got started in the mm -hmm. industry because we're not culinary chefs. We're basically right. just cooks right. at grandma's knee mm -hmm. in the loving old fashioned way. Sure. So we just wanted to sort of, you know, put that message out there mm -hmm. and know that you don't have to always go through that whole culinary process, but the love and the education is right there at your disposal. Mm -hmm. It's all about how you use it. And then I think, you know, you reach a certain level to where people always ask you, when was the first time you were introduced to food? Mm -hmm. That's what uh, was my biggest driving point to this topic. Because we always got that question, when were you first introduced to food? Was sure. it when you guys got married? Was it when you opened your first restaurant as a kid? And Jane and I both looked at each other and we said, you know, it was grandmama. Mm -hmm. yeah. sure. You know, grandmama in the kitchen cooking, you know, when we were knee high and she had a garden in her backyard right. and she had fresh vegetables right. and you know she was the original housewife just sat home every day <laughs> got up had a house coat on you know you know then she did, granddaddy right. went out and worked and, right. and she stayed there all day and she cooked breakfast lunch and dinner three squares a day mm -hmm. i mean consistently and we remembered those old good-fashioned meals and, and a, stories and that stories that came with them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when you look at back home with the Neelys, there's a couple of things that you will see that we hope that everyone will be able to resonate with. One is we did a bio on each one of our grandparents. Right. So we talked about them, and not just about how they cooked, but how they looked mm -hmm. and what they did, and 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 the things that uh, were so memorable for us. And then we talked about their recipes and what they were most famous for, the dishes mm -hmm. that we love. And so then Gene and I came full circle and said, okay, now let's take these dishes and modernize them. Let's put our own spin on them. Sure. And our own spin was, uh, one, for instance, is the blackened catfish. Right. Where my grandmother fried everything. She right. always fried catfish. Hey. So Gene and I says, well, people are not eating as much fried food now. Well. Let's blacken it. Well, and, <laughs> you know. a, and not to cut you off, it's so funny uh, because look how we ate back then versus now. Right. But my grandmother lived to almost 90, and right. people mm -hmm. now are dying at 43. Going, to hold, going yeah. eating healthy. Trump, as, as a, yeah. It, it's, I don't, I, it's just a weird But transition. you know what we said mm -hmm. in the book was that they – had true organic food. Right. right. It came from their gardens in their right. backyard, sure. or they on the weekend. My grandfather, I tell the story how he would go back to what he called the country. country. Yes, he moved sir. to the city. But he would go back to the country, to the farmland that his cousins and brothers still lived on, and he would get the fresh vegetables and bring mm -hmm. them back to the city, put them in what they called a deep freeze. Right. You know, and they would have them there, and they, and, and, and they would eat off of those for a week or two, and then he'd go back to the country. 
Well, now you go in the grocery store and you see organic. You don't know what the hell you get. No. Mm -hmm. You know, it right. says right. organic, but uh, who, who, where's the proof that it's really organic? Right. They truly had organic food, and they lived into their 90s because two things happened. They had a lifestyle of being very active. Mm -hmm. They got up, they worked hard, and they, they, they didn't lay around all day and watch TV and stuff, although my grandmother had, as the world turns, was on. Right. She was dusting the floor and vacuuming the, the uh -huh. carpet up off of it. I mean, sure. she worked her butt off. And my granddaddy went out and he worked hard all day. Sure. But they lived good, long, healthy lives. And mm -hmm. they fried a lot of stuff and everything. So, you know, Gene and I are starting to have this perception of it's not what you eat and how you eat. It's mm -hmm. the lifestyle. It's the balance. It's the, the lifestyle. balance of the, the lifestyle balance. that yeah. you live um, that will dictate, you know, the healthy side of your life. You know, what's fascinating about this book, it looks like a coffee table cookbook. The right. pictures are wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, my aunt, 94, she was like... <laughs> Isn't that photography the, amazing? The pictures it? look, yes. they bring the food and the recipes right. to life. To life. You don't have to read the book. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I, I right. totally, and I was, we were very pleased with that because it's, sometimes it's hard to capture certain dishes, but that photographer was amazing. Just but we are so like, uh, Gene and I from each one of our cookbooks and Down Home with the Needles was a New York Times bestseller that we're super proud of. Sure. We wanted to create fantastic recipes, but at the same time, we want to give a story. Mm -hmm. Because you can get great recipes anywhere. You can go right. online, you can go anywhere and get great recipes. Mm -hmm. And obviously we're very proud of our recipes, but we also want to give a story that will drive people back home, get them to thinking. Sure. Get them to thinking mm -hmm. about, you know, old school stuff. And, mm -hmm. oh, well, I grew up like that. You know, right. I'm just like the Neelys. And mm -hmm. so... Uh, a lot of the stories that we told were pretty much stories that uh, we hope that really stick with, you know, mm -hmm. the average American that's out there to say, I remember that. I, I and, can remember and, that. You know what, and, and that makes me think about when we were in Nashville and that lady stood up and she said, just listening to you guys is just making me think about mm -hmm. how my grandmother did, you know, all these things. So. It, it's sort of stirring up the old memories, mm -hmm. and hopefully they can use those. Oh, we don't want that. Drop your diamonds. Um, <laughs> no, you got hard to hit the ground. <laughs> it's just my little funky, little funky right Don't now. let her play with yeah. you. That hit the ground um, awful hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it, you know, it's what basically what we're trying to do is just wake up people mm -hmm. and just ring a bell and saying, you know. It's okay to be new school. Um, you sure. know, I understand the technology and all that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these old southern roots and these mm -hmm. old times are not to just be dispelled away. No. You can mix them up and bring a nice balance to it. Right. And that's important? Absolutely. 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 I mean, yeah. it's so important because we've balance. gotten so way away from it. Case and our, you I know, family time? Jane and I are very passionate, although we, we people... Um, look at us as these amazing cooks, sure. as we like to refer to ourselves. But right. we have such a big story to tell, and mm -hmm. it's not just about um, hanging out in the kitchen, but it's right. the fact that we've stayed together and known each other for almost 35, 35 years. We've married almost 20 years. We've raised two, raised two amazing daughters. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and hopefully that, you know, we can inspire young couples mm -hmm. and other people that it's so important to use food mm -hmm. or whatever your passion is as a couple to um, bring your family together, mm -hmm. keep your family together. I was just telling someone earlier today because I was asking about the book, and I said, my grandmother and my grandfather, as long as I can remember, and I may have even told the story in the book, I can't sure. recall, slept in separate bedrooms for uh -huh. as long as I can remember. Sure. When, when, when I was a kid and would go visit them, he had his own bedroom, uh -huh. and Ma Marina had her own bedroom. She had her fine um, uh, uh, linen and, and uh, right. comforter on. Uh -huh. You could never get up on that comforter. Sure. She would have a fit if you even <laughs> sat on that comforter. You know, pull that comforter back, boy. Don't you get up on my comforter. Mm -hmm. But they had separate bedrooms. But here was the thing. The, the constitution of marriage was mm -hmm. so important as an example mm -hmm. for their children and their grandchildren that I often thought as I got older, man, they couldn't stand and sleep together, mm -hmm. but they weren't going to get no divorce. Right. They stayed together as a couple mm -hmm. uh, because they were setting an example for their kids and their grandchildren that this mm -hmm. is how we do. And when they went before God and said that until death do us part, they mm -hmm. meant that. Mm -hmm. And they ended up staying yeah. together, but it was... That was such a general... But you know what? And, and I hate to cut you off because that was such a generational time. That's right. when 
family stayed together regardless. Through thick and thin. Through right. thick and thin. You know, sure. you knew that your husband had a girlfriend across the street and it was just sure. sort of accepted. Right. Well, you know, of course, times have changed. Right. You have women in corporate America. You know, mm -hmm. the times are just so different now. And while I can't appreciate that story, it, it's, it's just almost like, you have to sort of come to that place where do you really settle for that? Is that good enough? So we, and, and I know you and I've had this conversation over cocktails. We may have been drinking probably don't even <laughs> make any sense with it. Because Pat and I try, try to really just kind of just bounce off each other, just different ideas and stuff sure. like that. Just how mm -hmm. we grew up versus how I grew up because he grew up with, with his mother and father. I grew up in a single parent. Sure. But his dad died when he was 12. But mm -hmm. Now, now, and I always found that just so weird how women were just so accepting and I don't want to say meek, but submissive maybe right. maybe a better a different time. Or it's a very different time. It was time a different now. time, mm -hmm. uh, but, it but, it, it, but it was a time that was a part of our history. In our heritage. That and, it is. and our, and our heritage, heritage. Right. that should be, uh, regardless of how we've changed, because mm -hmm. obviously a lot has changed in yeah. terms of our lifestyles and things, but it shouldn't be forgotten. Accessibility. And our kids right. should know and understand, uh -huh. regardless of how they decide to live their lives and everything. Right. Sure. They should, they should know that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that it gets lost, whether it's the civil rights movement mm -hmm. or the struggles that African Americans, you know, Regina and I, just last week, were, was in New York, and we were, we were in a green room with uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Sure. Um, um, Greg Anthony played for UNLV, sure. you know, sports commentator, played all his years in the NBA, and Sherry Shepard, and mm -hmm. we were on The View. And one of the things that we talked about was we as African Americans have to really start to stick together. Mm -hmm. We have to share our ideals and our history and our heritage with mm -hmm. the younger generation so that they um, can appreciate the position that they're in. Sure. And even from a culinary standpoint, mm -hmm. you know, you should you should embrace the fact that your great great grandmother mm -hmm. cooked right. good meals for your great great grandfather. All right. So really, um, this interview and well, really this book, all of your books, and your TV show, and your let's just say media empire is really about family and the importance of tradition, mm -hmm. especially as as, as uh, African Americans. Absolutely. Uh -huh. So much more than just about the food. Food is just a conduit. It's, it yeah. is. It's an food, avenue. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it was, yeah, I was going to say, it was It was just the outlet to extend, it's the platform to open up the door for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, one of the things I was most proud of when we first started in television was that Gina made a strong stipulation with the network executives that we would be ourselves. Right. And when you watch our show and even through the book, you know, there's no script. Mm -hmm. We we speak straight from the heart, mm -hmm. and if it ever came a point to where we could speak from right. the heart, then it's time to cut it. It's time to uh, be done with it. And, and you find the importance of that because out of all the shows we visited, like just on this media tour, sure. how everybody has a teleprompter. Nobody free flows anymore, and for us, it's so weird to have uh, a teleprompter because we're so accustomed to just free flowing, speaking from the heart. Because uh, I find that that is just the, the most authentic way, and people are more relatable to that. So I, I really think that was the natural draw for not just African Americans, but all Americans, to understand and see a couple that that was transparent and they could relate to that. And that ability to speak from the heart Absolutely. through your food. Yes. Have because, propelled. because you know, food is just an extension uh -huh. of the love and the soul that it brings to you. Okay. That's all it is. This is my last question. <laughs> no words. Don't get mad at me. No words. We enjoy. I was watching, wondering. Yes, ma'am, baby. <laughs> cast iron skillet. I dug this one out. I see. And it Why good. is this so essential you know, to it, cooking food? Let me tell you. And our heritage. The cast iron skillet has been around forever. I can think of this when I was three years old, and just and you and there are steps to I tell people there are steps to season it. You don't just buy this right out. Right. You have to season it, put it on a baking plate, put oil in, and it takes a couple of steps to season it for the flavor to get in there. Sure. So no matter what you cook, it, that flavor seep through into that food. Uh -huh. But it, and our, our little going joke was that you know you can also use this a couple my, of ways. I mean, my, my grandmother, <laughs> my mother told me a story. Come that in at two o'clock if My, you want my to. grandmother <laughs> actually used it on my grandfather uh -huh. once for coming yeah. in too late. You know, uh -huh. But you know the thing that, that. The, the thing you about it was it, it, it was durable. Yes, sir. And Think about the dishes that can be 
prepared in a cast iron yes. skillet. Okay, so you can fry, whether it's right. catfish, fried chicken, or whatever. You can also make a, a, a fantastic cornbread. Sure. A hot water cornbread oh, yeah. or yeah, yeah. main <laughs> cornbread or whatever. Right. Then you can also use it for casseroles. Mm -hmm. You want to make a nice casserole. And you can you take it that. and make your yeah. casserole and then put it in the oven. So that's not a skillet like, you know, you go and buy most skillets. You can put so them in the oven at 450 no, degrees. Three weeks but you can do <laughs> you, that, can, and it lasts forever. Right. And, and, the and whether the people family. want to believe it or not, Gene and I have a cast iron skillet in our cupboard right now. We got all the new fancy pots. We even came out with our own pot and pan uh, um, uh, uh, line about a year or two ago. But we still have that old cast iron skillet, and when I'm ready to do me some good catfish, uh -huh. a blackened catfish, a fried catfish, or whatever, yeah. I pull that cast iron skillet out because it ain't going nowhere. It lasts forever. It's the real truth. Pat and Gina Neely, back home with the Neelys. Thank you for a wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank this has just been so a true much. treat. Thank you so <laughs> much for having us, man. This